Hello, my name is Wendy. For those of you who don't know me, uh, this is my testimony on how I came to know Jesus Christ and how I became a Christian. I have been a Christian now for about eight years. Um, I've never publicly shared my testimony before in all that time. And um, the reason being is because my testimony involves demons, demonic oppression, and the spirit world. And unfortunately, in the culture I live in, in American culture, um, the supernatural, the paranormal, the um, spirit world in general is a topic that's just not really um, honored at all. It's kind of mocked instead. So if you go to talk about it, you can be called crazy, labeled mentally ill, um, unintelligent, uneducated, just a fool. So um, I kind of kept to myself my testimony and I picked and choose who I told it to just, you know, for the sake of bearing good fruit with my testimony. But for whatever reason, right now, the Lord's really impressing upon me and laying it on my heart to share this. So um, it's unusual for me and it makes me feel vulnerable, but I am happy to do it for the kingdom of God. So um, this is my testimony. There was a lot that happened in high school. I was very depressed, um, empty. There was like a hole in my heart, something that was just unfulfilled. And I did not know what that was, but it was, it was just hard to deal with and hard to push through, but I did and I made it to college. I really got into partying. I got into partying a lot. I was drinking several times a week. If not multiple times a week, it was at least every weekend. I was smoking a lot of pot. Um, I liked to smoke marijuana at the time, so it was whenever I could afford it, I would. And then I also got involved with um, experimenting with hallucinogenic drugs, and I was going to music festivals and living a hippie lifestyle where it was very close to the earth and uh, free living. Paganism, mysticism, Wicca spirituality is what I was involved in. It was while I was in that lifestyle that a demonic entity entered my life. Um, at the time, I did not recognize it as a demon. I was very confused. I was very deceived. There was just this elaborate deception. It was like a veil over my eyes. I mean, that's the way the Bible describes it. But at the time, I, I had rejected Christianity from a young age. I really didn't think there was much t truth to it, so I had never read the Bible, I just didn't really think about it at all. And at the time that this happened, where I started to get um, demonically oppressed, it was basically like a haunting was happening to me. I was living at college at the time, and I lived. my college was fairly close to where I had grown up, so I lived in between those places. I would go home on the weekends, most weekends, and then spend my week at school. And this haunting was, it was just, it was inside of me, it was following me wherever I went. And the best way I can describe it was just like your typical haunting you see on TV. It was very real. Uh, most people did not believe me. I was kind of coming unhinged. I was mentally unstable. I was just sad all the time. My depression was out of control. My anxiety was out of control. I was inebriated a lot. I was definitely using substances too much. It was basically self-medication. I had gone numb. Um, I was making terrible choices. I had no respect for myself. Um, it was just a really, really bad time. And so then with this demonic activity added on, I just started to completely unravel and I was basically slipping into madness. So I started reaching out to people around me. I reached out to um, friends and family a little bit, but um, I was careful what to say to some people because I knew that they just wouldn't understand what I was going through, they wouldn't believe it, but a lot of people I just told them what was happening to me and they all just thought I was crazy. A lot of my friends that I partied with I could really tell didn't want to hang out with me anymore and quite honestly I can understand why. I was just such a mess that I think I was just too too weird for them and too deep for them at the time. Some people did try to help me but they didn't really know how and there was only one person that I know really believed me and accepted what I was saying was true and that I was actually being haunted. It was one of my roommates and my best friend at the time and she was with me a lot and she just saw some things that were totally unexplainable and she didn't know what or she didn't know why but she knew that something was tormenting me that we couldn't explain. So this was the state of my life. I'm about 21, 22 years old, this is going on. I was haunted like this for two years and at the end of this two year period I was so broken that I am convinced that I would have killed myself or I just would have died of the demon would have killed me. I was so not okay at all. It was in this time that I ended up meeting the man who is now currently my husband. 
Now, at that time, he met with me and we went on a date, and I'm not even sure why he went on a date with me, but I'm pretty convinced that it was God. It was something divine, because it was just, the timing was perfect. If it wasn't for this, I don't even know where I'd be today. But he was very open and not ashamed of what he believed, and he wasn't afraid to talk about it. He's a very open, welcoming person. So he and I started debating for about three days straight. We would meet with each other, and we would talk, and we'd talk and talk. And I was telling him my beliefs, which were, you know, I was pagan, and I was into Wicca, and I didn't believe in God or Jesus. Um, I wasn't a complete atheist, as I had been at one point in my life, but I was now, I guess you'd call it agnostic. I just, I believed in something, but I wasn't willing to define it. And he believed very passionately about God and Jesus, and he believed in angels and demons, and um, so we went back and forth, basically just having these really deep discussions about life where we just did not agree. I just had so many supernatural experiences that I'd never had one with Jesus, I'd never had one related to God, so I kind of just figured, you know, that can't be the truth, and I was pretty much rejecting what my husband was saying to me. So we had these discussions, and it was the third day. I went to his place, and he said, well, do you want to watch a movie? So I said, sure, let's watch one. And um, he said, go ahead and pick one. There's a box there. So I was going through the DVDs, and for whatever reason, I picked out The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Now, that is a freaky movie. I don't know how many of you have seen it. But I don't even know why I chose it. I had already seen the movie. I saw it in theaters, and it was creepy then, but I mean, I'm not even that into horror, so I don't know why I picked it to watch. So anyway, I picked it out, and he said, sure, let's watch it. So I put it in, and we're watching this movie, and as we're watching it, um, I just, it was like, it was like I'd been punched in the gut. It was just this feeling of like, this movie is so familiar to my life, and I just was watching it, and I'm like, I think that this is happening to me. And it was very unsettling and very disconcerting, and I was just, I was so uncomfortable for the whole movie as I was watching it. I could barely get through to the end because it was so disturbing to me because I just, I could see the parallels with my life, so many parallels, and I, I was disturbed. So at the end of this movie, I looked at him and I said, you know, I think this is happening to me, what's happening to the girl in the movie. And in this three-day discussion we've been having, I've been telling him about, you know, my haunting and my, what I had come to now think was like a spirit guide, and he had already suggested to me that he thought it was a demon and it was trying to control my life and to steal my soul, and I had, you know, kind of just shrugged that away in our conversation, but he said, no, I think you're right, I think that is what's happening to you, and so he asked, can I pray for you? And it was in that moment when he asked me that, that, that I opened just the tiniest sliver of my heart to the possibility that God might exist. Just the tiniest crack in the door of my heart um, to him. And I thought within myself, I kind of prayed and said, God, if you're real, if Jesus Christ is real, I want to know the truth. And so I took his hands and he started to pray for me. And the prayer was very simple. He just prayed, you know, God, thank you for Wendy. I want to lift Wendy up before you. I pray in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that this demonic oppression would be lifted from her and that the demons will have to leave and that it, she would no longer be burdened by this. This was literally the defining, changing moment of my life. It just changed everything for me. It was like the finger of God reached down and now this was a vision. I mean, I wasn't seeing it with my eyes, but it was within me. The finger of God reached down and just touched my center, like the center of my being. And there was this brilliant flash of white light, like an explosion, and the power in this light. It was like, there was like color in it, but it was white, brilliant white at the same time. And it, it was just a love and a purity just swept through my whole body. The darkness that was inside of me was obliterated. Literally obliterated. Nothing left of it. I felt it go and it was gone. And I let go of his hands after the prayer was over and I just sat there kind of in shock because the depression and the heaviness that had been on me, that had weighed me down for so long, was gone. The hole in my heart, that emptiness I had talked about earlier, it was filled. I was no longer, there was no longer an emptiness. And I was just 
breathtaking and mind blown and I just couldn't even I couldn't even wrap my mind around it I was I was kind of in shock and uh, everything just felt different it was like you know you pat yourself down like when you're trying to find something that you're carrying on you and it's not there you're like where is it it had just been so many years carrying this burden and the depression and the like the emptiness that I didn't even know what it felt like not to have that and now all of a sudden here I am and and I'm liberated I'm free of it and it was amazing but so overwhelming and I just sort of sat there in shock and actually tried to convince myself a few times no that didn't happen you, you just you're just you wanted it to happen you're just you're just acting crazy but there was no denying this it was it changed my life forever that exact moment that exact prayer in the name of Jesus the demons cannot stand and it was in that moment that I just knew the truth of it it had been a demon God was real Jesus was real it all was real and I had just been liberated by that power that they talk about and so I still didn't really know anything about the Bible I wasn't I didn't really know anything about Jesus or Christianity other than what you know we talked about in our debates for the last three days so in the coming weeks, things just started changing so quickly. I still lived at college, so it was the weekend I was with him, and he drove me back to college, dropped me off at my dorm, and I was walking there. I had a short walk from the parking lot to my dorm. And as I'm walking, it's nighttime and it's winter, and there's snow on the ground. Now, I'm an artist, and I've always just loved and been captivated by the beauty of nature and all the colors in nature, and I've always been, you know, able to capture that. But it was literally like I had been seeing in black and white before compared to how I was seeing things now. It was just incredible. Everything had a new dimension and the colors were so much more intense. And I remember the moonlight shining down on the snow that was laid out and it was shimmering and there was just like a rainbow shine to the to the sparkle of the snowflakes on the ground and like it was winter you know the coldest most dead most colorless months of the year and here i was seeing all of this amazingness and i just wanted to dance and sing and laugh and i i've never felt so much joy never before in my life had i felt so much joy and i was just filled with the holy spirit which at the time i didn't know that that's what it was but as i came to learn more and read the Bible and understand it and in that moment that God touched me I had not only had the demons been cast away from me I had been supernaturally healed of depression I had been given a new heart which is what it means to be born again in Jesus Christ it's when you literally get a new heart so your old one has died and you're just like resurrected with Christ in this new life and I had been filled with the Holy Spirit who now dwells with me and has ever since this entire eight years the Holy Spirit has dwelt with me it's just been amazing but to get back to the story um, that next coming weeks I was just a changed woman I totally changed I could now feel things around me I had discernment it was like a veil had fallen off of my eyes and I could see the world in an entirely different way and I realized the life I had been living and I was able to see myself and how like wicked I had been I had been acting in so much wickedness and selfishness and even though I wasn't you know intentionally evil I was so lost and in my lostness I had committed so many sins against myself against God and as the weeks went on, I just wanted to devour the Word of God. I wanted to, I just wanted to read it every day. I wanted to know everything about it. And I am a speed reader. I can read very quickly. So I just read the Bible cover to cover in like two weeks or something. I don't even remember how, well, how long it took me, but um, I just wanted to know everything that I could. And it brought me such a deep understanding of Christianity. And I realized that all the things I had perceived about it before, like I knew nothing. I knew nothing about it and I had made so many assumptions, so many misconceptions about God. And at the same time that I was reading the Bible, I also just felt led by the Holy Spirit to start writing down my sins, the things that came to mind, and repenting for each one. I would just write it down and then I'd repent. I'd say, I'm sorry, Lord, I'm sorry. Repentance is so important to the Christian faith because that's what God wants. He wants a heart that that can acknowledge the sin and be done with it and then God will separate us from our sins and he has he's forgiven me and the forgiveness feels so good because it's just that stuff that shame and the pain it, it it's all part of that weight that weighs you down and um, I also made a vow 
during that time period that I would no longer pollute my body with substances and I would no longer do anything willfully that would inebriate me because I wanted to keep a sober mind because a sober mind is a huge protection in the spiritual realm against demonic activity. I mean, your sober mind is, is important. So I wanted to be sober and by the grace of God, I have kept that vow and for eight years I have been completely sober and I never intend to do anything to the contrary ever again. It's, it's beautiful to be sober. But it was amazing to see the world the way that I was seeing it and I could see the lostness and the wickedness and the compassion I felt for people. You know, before, before this moment that I got touched by him and saved, I really hated people. I despised people. I, I mean, people aren't nice. They're not nice to be around. Everybody's lost and suffering and we're all so selfish and it was just, I didn't like people. I didn't like humanity at all. But now I had this compassion and this love and, you know, these people that were just so lost and dark. I just wanted to reach out and, and give them the light of God that I had. And of course, you know, that's not possible because God is the only one who can do that for everyone. I mean, we can't do anything. It's all through the power of the Holy Spirit. It's how the Holy Spirit works. But that is my testimony. Um, which is definitely condensed. There's so much more I could talk about. But I do want to say, as I'm wrapping this up, to get back to the whole thing about demons and the supernatural. Demons are real. It is easier to believe that they're not, I know. It's more comforting and, I mean, it's tough to believe that something like that is real. It's frightening. But, I mean, that's reality. Like, we need to acknowledge reality. And if something like this is happening to you, I believe you. I will pray for you. You can contact me and I'll pray for you. If you have watched this testimony and you want to know Jesus, if you want what I talked about, that Holy Spirit and that awesome, amazing, supernatural presence in your life and righteousness and freedom, then get on your knees and cry out to God. Cry out to him and tell him you want to know him and he will come to you because seek and ye shall find, knock and the door shall be open to you. It's in scripture. He wants that relationship with all of us. Hell was not made for us. Hell was made for the for the devil and his demons, which are truly, truly evil and wicked beings that hate God and they hate humanity and they want to destroy us. But you just, I just want to, I really want to impress upon you that it's okay to believe that they're real. It's okay to experience these things and acknowledge it and it's okay to talk about it if this is happening to you you need deliverance if this is happening to you people seem to think you know we're so egotistical we think we can control this stuff or that we can manipulate it or use it for our own benefit but you can't there are greater beings than you and the only reason that I currently have any authority over demons or that my husband had authority to cast them out of me is because of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will work through us, but the power is the Holy Spirit. He who is in me is greater than he who is in the world. It is the Holy Spirit that you need. And the only way, the only way that the Holy Spirit can come and dwell with you is if you accept Jesus Christ. If you believe that he was the Messiah and you give your soul to him, it's it's all connected. Through Jesus we receive the Holy Spirit. It was the gift that one of the one of the things that him dying on the cross provided for us, which is amazing because before the time of Jesus, people didn't have this. They didn't have the Holy Spirit. And we live in this time period where you can you can literally have this this blessed assurance and this comforter and this defender of your soul, and you need it because we are in a spiritual war. We're in a spiritual battle, and the cost is our souls. And the demons, they just have one, the demons and Satan, they just have one goal. And they're basically just filled with hatred for God and hatred for God's creation, and they want to destroy you. So, you know, that's a warning. It really is. It's a warning from me to you. I've been there. I've seen it. I know what I know what I know. I know this is the truth. And... I want to share it with you. I want you to have this enthusiasm and this joy and this peace, you know, in my heart that I have in my heart. I want you to share in that because it's not just for me. It, it's for all of us. It's our, it's, it's what we were made for this relationship with our creator. But, um, I will wrap it up here and just say, I guess I just want to pray. I want to pray for you all that are watching this and I want to pray for your lives and I want to pray against the demonic that could potentially be in your lives because, you know, talking about demons is scary, but the focus should never be on them. It should always be on God because he is greater. He is the greatest, the most powerful, and he's just amazing. So 
even though my testimony is about darkness and terror and demonic entities, in the light of Christ, it, it's obliterated, like what happened to me. So I'm just going to pray now. Holy Father, thank you so much for this opportunity to share my testimony. Thank you for giving me the boldness and the courage to do this. God, thank you for each and every person that is watching this video. Thank you for their lives and their souls, Father. I pray in Jesus' name over every person whose eyes see this video and whose ears hear these words, Father. I pray in Jesus' name for the salvation of their souls. I pray in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit that if there are any demons attached to these people that they would be they would be cast out. They have no more authority. In the name of Jesus, the souls that are watching this video are claimed for the kingdom of God. There is there is no authority anymore for demonic works, for demonic presence, or for depression or oppression or just negativity of any kind, Father. I pray in Jesus' name that you would fall on these people, that your spirit would fall on them and they would feel your presence and they would feel your holy fire and that they would come into a saving relationship with you, Father. Thank you so much for everything you've done for me and for my family and for my life. I thank you for your protection and your, your, your grace and your mercy and your providence and everything that you've ever given me. I just thank you, Father, and I just want to give my life and my testimony back to you. So, in Jesus' name, amen. And thank you, everyone, for taking the time to watch this. I hope that you're blessed.